so fly Even though the goal is to be in the green birds up in the sky And we so fly, staying cool these bottles like Holding the hot cold up in these times And we so fly, even though the goal is to be in the green birds up in the sky And we so fly, staying cool while cool it's like Holding the hot cold up in these times So yeah.
Hey folks, and welcome back for day two of Youth Voice Live 2020. We are super excited to be able to bring this uh, to you today, this Saturday. Um, for folks that are joining us for the first time, welcome. We're so excited that you're here. Um, and folks that are rejoining us for day two, welcome back. Um, Youth Voice Live is a production of Santa Clara County uh, Office of Education and the Office of Women's Policy. And last week, we had the pleasure of speaking with Emma Gonzalez. And oh my God, like Emma Gonzalez for me as an American activist, I looked up to it and I'm just so overwhelmed with a lot of the, the things that they were able to bring up. Uh, especially learning just about their pronouns. To me, as a trans woman of color, I just feel that that was just overwhelming with the information uh, that she was able, or they were able, sorry, see, um, they were able to share out. Um, so some serious issues around mental health and physical health, and um, there are a lot of things that both are related. So um, some advice, if you remember, um, they talked about being vigilant and just getting a good amount of sleep. Um, remember during this time, especially during shelter in place, uh, being able to move your body as much throughout the entire day. This includes stretching, this includes yoga videos, it includes walking around, dancing, playing and being active, playing active video games. I know a lot of you have that switch out there and I know they have those motion controls. <laughs> so maybe use that to be able to uh, be active. Um, there's also uh, breathing apps, there's meditation. There's a lot of stuff you could actually find on YouTube to be able to take care of yourself during shelter in place and all the things that are going, all the icky stuff that's going on right now in the world. Um, stay hydrated, drink plenty of water. And um, other than that, we're gonna make sure that we include as many of the resources that we have. And if you have questions on any kind of resources that you will need, make sure to just let us know uh, and we'll be able to provide you those today. Um, other than that, today's event is about finding your voice and telling your story. And we wanna start off by checking in and seeing how you're feeling. And I'm wondering, about the current events that are going on within like this week alone, it's a lot to take on. It's so much to take on. Uh, we are all watching it right now. Um, and in the last couple of days, I'm sure you've seen the, the mass demonstrations even here in, in Santa Clara County that's happening, right? And uh, with the deaths of George Floyd, Ahmed Arbery, Breonna Taylor, and Tony McDaddy, these are things that are affecting us. And these are things that we wanna make sure that we highlight. Uh, when you read quotes uh, from those who are protesting, it's clear that people feel frustrated, right? And with the acts and the protests and demonstrations, people are fed up, they're frustrated, um, and they're asking for change. Right now we wanna hear from you. So we're gonna do a little bit of an exercise. Uh, we're gonna be using an app called Mentimeter. And uh, we're gonna populate that right in the screen. So let's go ahead and bring up Mentimeter. And right now, what we are going to do is we want you to tell us in two or three words what you see, feel, or wonder about what's going on right now. So all you need to do, just go ahead using your phone, go ahead and just bring it up Scan that QR code, bring it up. Um, and moderators, if you're standing by, if you have that link to the code, go ahead and populate that right for the participants. And what we're gonna do is we're gonna do this quick exercise. It's a word cloud exercise. And I wanna know with everything that's going on right now, how are you feeling? We'll give that a second. Everyone got that QR code? And I feel it, I, I see some of them populating in the, the chat window here. But let's see, let's see if we can make that into the word cloud. So with everything that's going on right now, how are you feeling? You guys got that QR code? Yeah? Go ahead and put one, two, or three words to make it. We wanna know. And I think you could do more than just one word. So feel free. Let's go ahead and bring up that word cloud. Let's see what the voices, our attendees, our panelists are thinking right now. Okay. 
give it about half a minute and we'll bring that up. Yeah, there we go. Yeah, so frustrated, angry, sad, scared, stressed, intense. Very charging words, right? Even my, my, I myself, and I don't know if any of y'all uh, were at yesterday's, any of the protests that were going on, uh, but I myself were feeling those emotions, walking with people, um, with the community, during shelter in place for a rally or a march, a protest, because that's what I needed to do to take a little bit of self-care because I too felt frustrated. I too feel angry. I do feel sad, stressed, distraught, hug deprived, my Lord, hug deprived. I want to give everybody a hug. I miss so many people. Let's see other words. Drained, that's a good one. Delve, helpless, disoriented, energetic. Let's look for these positive ones, okay? Energetic, relaxed, hopeful, we need hope, loved. If you put loved, we need your love. Love is so important right now, right? Ready, ooh, ready. That's why we're here today. We want to make sure that you are ready and you have the tools necessary. Again, like, Feel free, if you have more words, feel free to put it out there, right? Disheartened, insane, hurts, disappointed, activated, that's a good one. Activated, being activated, being aware, being woke, right? Being aware of who you are, centering yourself. These are all valid feelings. Vigilant, I love that one. Vigilance, staying focused, staying like, again, after we go through this, we wanna make sure that we're centered, we're focused, and we're gonna make change because this is why we're here today. So, ah, that was a great exercise. So feel free to continue to fill that up. We'll share the entire word cloud, cloud after this event, but uh, let's get into today's talk. I am super excited to be um, here today to have a conversation with Tyson Amir. Uh, Tyson Amir, welcome to the program and thank you for being part of Youth Voice Live 2020. Right on, thank you for the, the invitation, especially to the folks behind the scenes putting together Youth Voice Live and for all of you young folks who jumped on as participants and attendees, I'm really excited about the session. I'm excited about you being here. I'm excited about the work that we're gonna to do together and yeah. I'm looking forward to it. Let's make it happen. Absolutely. Do you have any kind of like reflections as to what's going on right now? Um, like anything, if you were gonna put words in that word cloud, um, what are some of the things that come up in your mind? Yeah, I, I definitely do. Uh, I know we, we were saying two to three words. I'm going to have a couple more words than that. <laughs> yeah. But I mean, one of the things that always comes to mind and why I was excited about Youth Voice Live is because of the fact that we're dealing with young people and we see problems in our society right now. Yeah. What I've learned from history that I've studied and movements that I've been a part of the movements that I've followed, young people are the ones who are always at the heart of creating change in society. Yes. And this is, in many ways, a universal truth for our species on this planet. We've always seen young people at the heart of change, generations and generations. And so to be in a space with young people right now, although we're dealing with such a turbulent time, it's good to be in a space with young people because y'all are the ones who are going to help make this a more just and equitable society. Absolutely. 
and going to some of the protests yesterday, it was uh, very much so a youth-led movement. So again, it's wonderful to see that you're helping support and give tools, uh, tools and resources to the youth um, within our own work that you do and to the folks that are joining us today. So we thank you for that. Um, so you, you describe yourself as an author, a musician, an educator, a community organizer, and a freedom fighter. What sparked this interest for you in activism and what medium of expression did you choose first? Mm, it's a good question. I mean, for <laughs> me, right, it's always been, I know that I'm not, well, the stuff that I do is not possible without understanding the things that came before me. And so I have always been moved by the historical tradition that I know that I've inherited directly from the people that I come from. So when it comes to, as I was alluding in my previous comments, different movements and organizations and peoples that I've followed. Um, I come from a very strong history of folks who faced turbulent times just like we're facing, and they took it upon themselves to try to do something about that. And so my history, the history of other peoples and other communities and seeing how they responded to the challenges that faced them, that has inspired me. And then what I did because of the time that I grew up in, you know, hip hop was, was still brand new. And so it was something that I took to and I did the best that I could to take the information that I was learning and pair it with that hip hop and use that as a way to be able to deliver a message or amplify that message so more and more people could be exposed to it and be impacted by it and hopefully be motivated to want to do something based on what they're hearing out of the material. And that just continued to evolve. But like the the most important part to me in the question that you asked was that of being a freedom fighter. I really yeah. think it's essential to work extremely hard to try to create a situation where people can be free. And we're seeing what happens when people are not free in our society right now. Yeah. And you mentioned hip hop. Is there anything, any kind of uh, artist that you gravitated towards that inspired the work that you're doing today? A uh, number of artists. I, I've listened to so many people, so listen, still listen to so many yeah. different people. Uh, but it was, you know, I, I listened to a lot of the, the, the hip hop of the late 80s, early 90s, and that was filled with a number of messages that uh, reflected what was going on in society, especially the political and the social changes that people wanted to see. And I was definitely inspired by that. And then that coincided with stuff that I was learning, I was reading movements that I was a part of. And so that's always been like my foundation when it comes to how I express myself yeah, as an absolutely. artist. Like some of the, cause I also grew up with hip hop in my background and like first albums that come to mind are like Nas is Zillmatic, I always go to that. Mm -hmm. Then yesterday I was listening to Kendrick because my healing song was All Right from yeah. Tempa Butterfly. And then like, I just, found, I just skip a couple tracks and that his song, I, I mm -hmm. love myself. It's just that that to me was very healing. So I'm I'm there with you when it comes to like taking in hip hop and using that as a form of activism as a form of healing, especially for myself. So mm -hmm. yeah, mm -hmm. I really appreciate that. Um, mm -hmm. Writing is often sometimes something that students and adults find difficult, right? Mm -hmm. And especially during social shelter in place, a lot of a lot of kids, a lot of folks, a lot of, even myself, find difficulty writing, but we have nothing, we have so much time in the world to be able to write right now. Mm -hmm. It could be somewhat intimidating, right? So uh, what gave you the confidence as a writer? And can you describe uh, your journey as a writer? Uh, I would say the confidence of a writer, I, n I never really, I think I, I lacked that for a long time when it came to how I guess you could say traditional writing, and, and I don't like using that term, but the way that I was presented writing. So when it came to hip hop, I was cool. I could, well, I, initially when I started, I didn't even know that people wrote lyrics. Everything that, the way that I was raised in uh, the community that taught me hip hop, everything was improvisational. So we would freestyle all the time. So I was rapping for years without ever picking up a pen to write in that way, as in words on paper. I was writing in my mind but I wasn't putting pen on paper and writing lyrics that way. So I first began to write inside my head and I loved it. I felt free with that. But then going into school and being told, write this paragraph, write this essay, write this report, 
I didn't really care for that. I was not motivated. I was not inspired. It didn't yeah. touch anything inside of me for that. So yeah. hip hop definitely inspired me. And then what people see right here on the screen right now, this is an author that was introduced to me through my mother. So Richard Wright, his work, Black Boy. I don't know how many of you are familiar with my work. I have a book entitled Black Boy Poems, which was strongly inspired by Richard Wright. So seeing people through hip hop and then also seeing people through literature that told stories that reflected experiences that I could connect with. And then they wrote with language that really moved me, that inspired me. So I didn't get it directly from my school experience. I got it outside of my school experience. And then once that happened, I wanted to be able to do it in as many ways as possible. So whether it was through hip hop, whether it was poetry, whether it was writing a book, uh, I mean, I started writing songs for other people. I just wanted to be able to express myself and go as far as I could with that material. And so now you see this right here, this is a, uh, the first album, my first solo album, which was called Ghetto Messiah. This was something that I put out years ago. And uh, I've been on a, in a few different groups and so I've released group albums, but that's, that's what it was for me. It was inspiration coming from other means that weren't tied to school. So hip hop mm -hmm. was extremely influential. And then other material that I started to read and I was able to connect with and then see the power of words and then see the beauty and how you can use language to move people, to create images in their mind to create a feeling in their heart that inspires them to want to do something and then when that happened i got that bug i wanted to do it as much as possible right and i know within the presentation moderators if you could just go back a little bit uh we did have imagery of folks and I, I just want to make sure that we highlight that in terms of sparking activism um i know within the presentation tyson um did you want to explain some of the images that uh, we were we were sharing earlier. Yes. So if you want, we can we can go back. So the first image, this this brother right here, Toussaint Louverture, he was somebody that I learned about real early on, but I didn't learn about him in school. I learned about him outside of school, and so mm -hmm. he's viewed as the leader of the Haitian Revolution. And mm -hmm. so when we are taught about revolutionary struggles or struggles for change in society, and this was a struggle for freedom and liberation of oppressed or exploited people. On the, on, on the island of Haiti. Uh, this dude was a very influential person in that movement because these were forcibly enslaved people who overthrew their oppressive institution and then created a free society for everybody. And in the Western hemisphere, so like we talk about, we'll talk about the American Revolution or the Revolutionary War. People will talk about the, the revolution that took place in, in England they'll talk about the French Revolution, like they'll highlight these different historical epochs. But this revolutionary struggle could really be considered the only true revolutionary struggle that led to freedom and liberation for everybody. Because here in this country, after the American Revolution, you still had uh, slavery legal in this country up until the present day. So of course, like the Civil War, you get the 13th Amendment, but it's still legal here in the United States for somebody who has been convicted and that's a very interesting word of a crime in the united states you can be legally enslaved so that has not gone away in this country but in haiti in the early 1800s they were able to establish a true free and just society for everyone right and so toussaint is important to know for that all right and i know we had a couple more images yeah so we had nat turner we had harriet tubman mm -hmm. uh i think we have Booker T. Washington and Marcus Garvey. So right. with that first question, looking at people who have mm -hmm. Ida B. Wells as well, uh, yeah. who have inspired me, these are it's just a snapshot of folks who yeah. were in many ways got involved as young people, but then were dedicated to a mission throughout their entire lives, however long that was. And they were focusing on how can we work to make this society more just and equitable for everyone? Yeah, absolutely. All right, so going back to you, so taking everything, uh, your journey as a writer, um, when did you decide to publish your first book? And um, what other books have you published since then? I know, yeah, I, so as I was saying, and you know, as we saw a little bit in the presentation, yeah, I wasn't thinking about books at all. I, right. I was doing music and I was right. really happy with music. 
but at the same time, like analyzing what I wanted to do with my art or with my work, I felt that music was limited. So people would experience the song, they would experience an album, maybe they'd come see me at a show, they might watch mm. videos, and it's cool, like they get the content, but there was so much more that went into every single bar that I wrote in that song. Yeah. So, you know, I, I mean, I could quote a lyric right now, there's so much history, there's so much political analysis that goes into those words. And so I wanted people to be able to get more. Mm-hmm. And in 2015, I had an idea after revisiting Richard Wright's book, Black Boy, I was mm-hmm. like, I can write something that was as powerful as he wrote at his time before my time. And it made sense to do it where I took the hip hop that I write, I took some of the poetry that I write, and then I paired it with more of a modern analysis of what's going on. And so on October 15, 2016, my book, Black Boy Poems, came out. And that date is special to me because it, it, October 15, 1966, was the birth of the Black Panther Party. So I put it out on the 50th anniversary of the Black Panther Party. Very cool. And what other books have you written since uh, Black Boy Poems? Is there any other books that folks yeah. should be aware of? Since, since the publication of Black Boy Poems, I mean, I had a, a big vision when the book came out. I knew that I was going to do a lot of work in many other areas. Yeah. And so one of those areas was trying to make it where the book could be more of a research uh, resource for education institutions. And so I created what's called the Black Boy Poems curriculum. So I published nice. that. And then my bad for you know talking so much right now, but I'm, I'm happy to be joined by three students that I've worked with who are part of other books that have been published uh, through some of the work that I do. So I've, I've done work with Eastside Union High School District and we run a program mm-hmm. called Articulation is Power. So right. last year we published Articulation is Power Volume 1 and this year, matter of fact, yesterday, it went official in the Amazon uh, online store that Articulation is Power Volume 2 was published. And so nice. some of the young people who contributed to these volumes are on the call today and going to be some of the guest facilitators for the workshops. So I've published stuff on my own. And what I think these two things that the young people are seeing right now represent, it's one thing for me to do it. It's another thing for me to be able to use my knowledge, my experience, and my expertise to help other people do the same thing mm-hmm. because we have to tell our stories. What would it be if I'm the only person that's out here telling my story? Nah, we got to empower other people to do that too. And so articulation is power represents that. So I'm really proud of those works because I know these young people are going to continue doing amazing things. I just look forward to what they're going to do. Even with my own community, with the LGBTQI plus community, um, I'm steeped in really using storytelling as a device to gain more allies and to empower our community to get their stories out there. Mm -hmm. So it's really cool to see how intersectional the work that we do is is critical in in, Mm -hmm. you know creating for social justice and equity so that that resonates really really highly with me um what other social issues influence your writing and your music i know and i was grooving to it like um if you folks didn't know if you joined us earlier like before we started um those beats were created by you, right? The, those Nah, those not me. So they're from they're okay. from albums. They're from my albums, and so okay. both of those beats were were produced by my production partner. His name is mm. On Beat. Oh, so perfect. we have a group called Tyson On Beat, and so he oh. makes the music, and of yeah. course I write all the lyrics. And so he's oh, an incredible cool. producer. And so both uh, of those were from him. Very cool. And is there any uh, social issues that influence your your writing and your music? Everything. Yeah. I mean, it's really, I, like, I'm not the the biggest, tallest person. So I don't like bullies for some reason. I don't know where that came from, but I don't like that. So I don't like seeing people being taken advantage of. I don't like seeing people exploited. I don't like seeing people oppressed in whatever part of the world that they're in. And so I feel I have a calling to stand up for that, especially because I come from a historical, a social and a cultural tradition where people have experienced that for generations. So I, I'm against that everywhere that I see that and I do my best to use whatever I can to fight back against that. So words are one thing, but actions are extremely important. I mean, it's a, a wisdom that I learned from one of my revolutionary elders. Words are beautiful, but actions are supreme. So we say something about it, but what are we doing about it? Yeah. And so I'm against that. I'm against the injustices that we see in our society, the oppressive things that we're seeing in our society. And so what's been happening over the past couple of days 
the the rebellions that that are taking place. I understand it and I support that. And we need to change that. It shouldn't be a, a state that we shouldn't be experiencing a state that treats people differently because of whatever demographic being forced to accept in this institution that we live. You know what I'm saying? So yeah. those are the those are various social issues that influence what I write, what I correct, what I create, and more importantly, what I do in response to what I see. Yeah, absolutely. And there's no doubt in my mind, especially being part of the social climate today, seeing the amount of youth that are driving this movement right now as we speak. Yeah. Um, as someone that has been in social justice work and as a writer and as a musician, everything that you do, all the all this content that you're putting out there, uh, what, mm -hmm. advice is, what advice do you have to give to young people who want to start their own pathway to express them themselves or becoming activists? I think that's a very important question. And I think that's why we're here. And I think yeah. some of the young people are already answering that question themselves. And so I just want to support what's already going on. I, yeah. We all have a responsibility. We have a duty and we have to be paying attention to what's going on around us. And when we see things that are not right, and there are a number of things that are not right in our society, we have to do something about that. And you as young people, you have inherited the legacy of the young people who came before you who have worked to make society more just and equitable for folks. You are the ones who have that, that insight. You can clearly see what has gone on before you and what isn't working. And then you can come up with these new ideas to figure out what we can do differently to make things more just and equitable for folks. And so we gotta get busy and y'all have power in you. So although our society sometimes will try to be on some, oh, y'all young, you can't really do anything. You don't really know anything. It's not necessarily true. There's a lot more that all of us can learn, but there's so much that you can do. There's so much that you already do understand. And we just need to become more strategic and tactical with what we go about doing or how we go about trying to approach these challenges and then the solutions that we want to see in our society. And your words are a very important part of that. What you write is extremely important for that because because it can shape what you do. Yeah, yeah. absolutely. Um, we're gonna pivot just a little bit. I do have some questions from the audience and they're populating right up here if you don't mind. Um, so I have this question right here from uh, Rachel Honda from Evergreen High School. Um, their question is uh, police brutality and a lot of other forms of racial disenfranchisement have existed for decades. And it's continued even though it's gotten a lot of attention from media and politicians. Regardless of political parties, why haven't things changed over the past 30 years? And does this show that our politicians and representatives don't really have our best interest at hand? Mm, it's a great question. And with all these questions, it, I'm going to give my opinion, but it's important for you all to think critically as well about what you see happening around you. And then also, there are stuff for us to learn. We have to look at things from a historical context to try to understand why things are happening the way that they happen in the present. And so without doing too much extra talking, we live in a society that from its inception or in its foundation has had major issues when it comes to dealing with folks of African descent, with our indigenous population, with women. Uh, and then as other groups started to migrate to what eventually becomes known as the United States of America, they were greeted with various forms of systemic oppression and injustices. And right. when you have that in the core of the thing, it's very difficult for that to be separated out of it. And then when you begin to look at the history of how law enforcement evolved as well, that evolved in a way where it was heavily focused on trying to oppress and repress the movements of people of African descendancy and then also indigenous natives. Right. So when it's already focused on a specific population to begin with, again, it's difficult for that to be separated out of it. And so, yeah, you got politicians that talk about it. You have a lot of attention being brought to those issues because of cell phone cameras and yeah. whatever else is going on right now. But if, we're not addressing the root causes. So it's one thing to try to look at the consequences of something, but if we're not addressing the root causes, are we really solving that problem or trying to solve that problem? 
And so as young people, I think y'all have the ability to really focus on the root causes instead of more of the, the aftermath or the consequences of it. And so that's why we got to know. We have to look at the history. We have to look at what's happening. We have to look at who's really focused on the systemic and the structural changes and then who's really just talking more about all right let's just put body cameras on police officers right. we'll arrest somebody who uh killed somebody but they're never going to be charged for anything we're not we're not doing anything that's focusing on the systemic stuff right. and right. that's where we need to go if we're going to really create a different society yeah absolutely agree with you um i think that's, we'll, we'll leave the questions open and I want to move forward. I know that you're going to be doing a performance for us today. Um, so um, folks, if you still have questions, make sure you just populate that in the chat and the moderators will pull them so I could ask them later. But uh, right now, let's move on to, uh, to performance. So I'm, I'm very excited to see what you have in store for us. So um, I'll let you take control and- Right on. Everybody Sounds does. good to me. Yeah. So I would encourage y'all who are, who are following along, if you want, as it says, click for lyrics. I'd love for you to read, because as I was saying before, I put a lot into every line that I write. And I would love for you to be able to see it so you can follow it and hopefully understand the information that much more. But this is a piece entitled Traditions from a song that I wrote, um, and it's the second verse. So go ahead, man. Let's put the, let's put the, uh, the piece on for the folks, and I hope that y'all enjoy it. Greetings, everybody. How y'all doing? We here at Youth Voice Live 2020. My name is Tyson Amir. I'm the author of the books, Black Boy Poems and the Black Boy Poems Curriculum. And what I want to do right here is just show you a little bit of how I try to use my words to have an impact on society. So this is a piece that I like to do for folks. It's entitled Tradition. So Tradition is originally a song. So there's two verses to it. There's a first verse and a second verse. And this right here, we're only going to be doing the second verse. So I hope y'all ready. This is tradition verse two. Prepare your mind for expansion. Can you fathom? We go from atoms to addom. Design intelligent all because of a pattern. It's intrinsic. They say the wisdom is infinite. And if a tip of a pen is dipped in oceans with reservoirs that are limitless to write a manuscript, you still couldn't extinguish it. Feel the rhythm of the algorithmic, the binary mind that's balancing the Tao in physics. If consciousness is existence that postulates possibilities endless, while oscillating between forces tremendous, contemplating source of beginnings, be diagonally higher, alpha omega, but looking for truth as it found in the Veda, Siddhartha Gautama found in the shade of the Bodhi tree. And the potency of this poetry is somewhere on the level of what Odin speaks. Decipher runes and some Roman ruins on second viewing. Olmec statue knows is looking like it's Patrick Ewing. Tanakh chapters, Quran, suras, or it's Buddha's sutras and a cipher with shudras. My hand jesters look like Buddha's mudras. They try to knock the hustle, you can't knock the knock the guru. They off that Hulu doing dark side like Count Dooku. I make him woodoo on the steps of Pyramid Khufu. Holla Yahuru, keep on spitting out this black voodoo. Traditions we carry be ancient. A myriad of perspectives trying to explain what our place is a complicated arrangement of colored faces, different languages, animal, mineral, molecular matrix, heaven and hell reincarnation. It's all sides of the same conversation. The real question, is it evolution or elevation? Is it really the fit who survive if the soul and mind is stuck in stagnation? High technology put impotent moral interpretations. We ignore suffering by changing the station or playing with applications on a smart mobile device. Thousands in the social network, but we can't socialize. Them wolves in sheep clothing to come and remove the wool from your eyes. And we reap what we sow. We got a spool full of lies. Tradition says the way's in the heart. It's not in the sky. Tradition says the way's in the heart. It's not in the sky. Tradition says the way's in the heart. It's not in the sky. And that's the reason why I carry on tradition. And may we 
carry on tradition for our people to be free, power to the people. That was beautiful. Right on. <laughs> that's it. That's the uh, that's tradition verse two. I like that piece. I like that piece a lot. There's a lot of a lot of history. There's a lot of culture. There's I I wanted to put a whole bunch of that in there. Yeah. So we could see the beauty in uh, in what we've done as a people, but then also like celebrate our tradition. And hopefully, our tradition inspires us to try to make the world a better place. And so that's why how I ended that. That's beautiful. Um, we have another question from you, or for you, from an anonymous student. Um, their question is, uh, as an activist, through your writing and through your raps, um, even through your spoken word poetry, um, who is the audience you hope to hear what you have to say and what impact uh, do you want to have on them? Right on. I don't know if I really focus so much on audience. I focus more on what I feel I need to say or what I feel I'm being compelled to say. And you can think about who you're addressing. And that is an important strategy for writing because you don't want to write in a way where you're saying something and people can't access the information. So that is important. But I've, I've always leaned more heavily on what do I feel I'm trying to get across? And then being confident in my skill set to be able to create that message where whoever is going to experience it will be able to get something from it. And so the, the second part of that question, like what do I want people to be inspired to do? Like at the end of that piece, I said, you know, we're trying to carry on tradition for our people to be free. Mm -hmm. That's that's what I want. I want to see people continuing to work to try to fight for a more just and equitable society. There's no reason for COVID-19 to be happening and people to not have access to quality health care, to not have access to housing, to not have access to any of the basic things that we need. Like that's, if we, if many of us think about society, I don't think we're thinking about a society where some people are gonna have some things and a whole bunch of people are not gonna have access to nothing. Right. Now, I, that, at least that's the team that I'm on, I'm not with that. So. I want to see a society where people have access to the things that they need. And yeah. if we don't have that, then who are the people that are going to work to try to make that a reality? Yeah, absolutely. Um, we have a student from Quimby Oak Middle School, uh, Vaiba, uh, Vaiba Vesh uh, Rajesh. I'm sorry. I'm sorry if I butchered your name. Um, but from Quimby Oak Middle School, um, what do you think is the best thing to uh, address the issue? What do I think is the best thing to address the issue? Yeah. Well, um, that right there, I, I think um, that that's a very important question, right? Because some of the issues that we're dealing with, these are issues that we've seen for years or for generations. But each moment, each generation, things change. Like as an example, right, there was a, there was a quick picture of uh, me standing next to Kaepernick. So I, I met Colin Kaepernick and some of you might be familiar with him, the, the former football player. He's been basically banned by the NFL from getting a job as a quarterback again. So I met him. We, we've done a little bit of work together and I'm using him as an example because what started, what eventually led to him being blocked by the NFL was him taking a knee. I don't know how many of us get on our knees in a day or I mean, in the past couple of months, it's not really a, a uh, like a revolutionary movement per se, but by him taking that knee at that moment in time, it had this impact. Now, I, there've been some memes lately where people have been using the, the, the picture of Colin Kaepernick on his knee with the officer that killed the brother George Floyd. And he was also on his knee and they've been trying to use that as a, an analysis of those two things. It can be anything. It could be you taking a knee. It could be you picking up your pen and writing. It could be you walking outside and connecting with other folks who are of like mind and beginning to, to organize around a specific issue. It can be anything, but we got to think about what's happening and how we feel we can best start addressing whatever's happening. But we have to do something. 
Because if we're not doing anything, then for sure, we're not speaking to or putting momentum towards addressing that issue. We got to do something. But that beginning point, it can be anything. That's what I'm saying. It could be a knee. It could be a protest. It could be maybe you get together with some of your friends and y'all start writing something and you spread it through your social media network. It could be anything like that. The beginning point can be anything. Yeah. But we have to follow through and we have to support it with action. Absolutely. And I know that Colin Kaepernick comes as a, a constant um, image of kneeling. And that's a form of, you know, nonviolent protest. And a lot of people are saying, like, this was, this has been stemming, this has been going on, and yet here we are today. So mm -hmm. very powerful imagery. And even seeing folks, protesters out there taking the knee as a form of nonviolent protest, that's still something that just harkens back to, I was even there when I first uh, was watching those football games and being in the midst of that, I, just, mm -hmm. I really remember it that time. Um, before we go to a breakout session, um, I do have one final uh, question for you. Um, this is from one of your facilitators, Angela, who a lot of you folks will be able to meet in a second. Um, why do you think these protests are so different from previous ones? Uh, we're seeing people from all ethnic backgrounds across the mm -hmm. entire nation protesting. Why is it different this time? Oh, I mean, that's a, that's a great question, too. That I think if we're looking to really create change, and so the, the diversity of the young people who are on this call already, it's going to require something like that. So why is it different? Maybe this is the time where we really begin to focus more on the commonality and who we are as people. And so with that, the tradition piece that I, I had as the performance, I used a lot of historical, social, and cultural references from peoples from all throughout the world. Like we have to. We have to see how we can support each other. Like we're different and that's okay. There's nothing wrong with our differences. We can celebrate those differences. We can appreciate, we can understand those differences. Mm -hmm. But then at the same time, when something is happening to a specific community or multiple communities, we have mm -hmm. to find out how we can support each other and not be divided by those differences. And some of us, and I don't even think we intentionally want to divide ourselves by our differences. Sometimes it's more our society is telling us to be afraid of these people because they look like this or they talk like this or they pray like this or they came from this other place. That's not something that came from us naturally or innately, but we're being raised up in a society that's telling us, oh, no, you don't want to do that or you don't want to talk to them or you don't want to be around them. So yeah. I think it's extremely important for us to see how we can support each other and how we can use the strength in our differences to contribute to whatever we're doing. So what Angela was asking, maybe that's what we're seeing. And I think that is one of the things that this generation can give to us where, I mean, you all are in such a diverse society. Cool. Let's use that. How can we use the, the diversity and turn it really into the power of the people and then mobilize that power to work for change? Absolutely. Well, thank you for sharing your thoughts. I know we're gonna go in the breakout rooms, which um, I'm gonna have you leave in a second. Folks uh, in the audience, all participants, if you have any further questions, feel free to just like send those questions in. We're gonna do our best to be able to answer them for you. So feel free to continue answer or asking those questions and we'll get to it. But um, Tyson, I'm gonna give it uh, to you. Uh, we're going right. to lead these breakout sessions, and um, I know you have wonderful hosts uh, that yes. are going to be leading this, so uh, go ahead and take it away. Thank you, sir. I appreciate that. So, all right, y'all, this is what we came to do. I, part of it was, yeah, I, I was going to speak a little bit, but it's really about you all and how you can use the resources that you have within yourself to begin to have an impact on society. And so we have this workshop set up for you where we're going to write, we're going to create, we're going to challenge you to think about what you can do and what you want to see different in society. And so there are going to be four different breakout groups. I'm going to be facilitating one of the groups. And then I have my guest facilitators with me. So you, some of you might be in the group with Angela. Some of you might be in the group with Jalen. And some of you might be in the group with Ebony. And so each one of these folks have become published authors in the Articulation is Power program. And so you're going to get that and we're gonna have some fun. And what I hope you will wanna do is continue with us because there's an opportunity for us to take the work that you're gonna create and turn it into a published book after the fact. 
and then we'll have something that we can give to society for them to think and reflect and hopefully learn from so we can work to create a more just and equitable society. So let's do it. Okay, so in your participants, in your agenda that you received, you should have a link number two. And at this point, you need to exit this webinar, go to the agenda, click on link number two, and then you will be placed into your breakout room. Thank you. Staying cool while it's like holding a hot coal up in 